our gospel reading this day from Luke's gospel, beginning in chapter 1, verse 26. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I am a virgin? And the angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son and is in the sixth month of her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. We say thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. Would you pray with me? Holy God, we invite your presence into our lives, into this room, into our homes far and near. We invite you. For we know that you are present with us. And Lord, now in this time, may we hear the words that you have for us, the message for our hearts, the message for our lives, your message of love and grace. Lord, in this time, be present in and among us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. On November 15th, 1991, My husband Todd and I were going to dinner to celebrate my birthday. Earlier that morning, I had been out running some errands, and I learned of something very exciting. And I wanted to share it with Todd. He had been busy all day, and as a military intelligence officer at the time, he was virtually impossible to contact during the working hours of the day. This news would have to wait until dinner. Knowing something is difficult. It's hard to hold it in. Anyway, we met at the restaurant after Todd got off work, and we sat down, and before we could even order the drinks, I had to share what I knew. I told him that something important that I had learned that day, and I had been waiting to tell him all day. He looked at me with worry, and he said, Honey, what's up? I looked him in the eyes and I said, her life is getting ready to change. Now, if you know my husband, but I'm telling you some of you don't know him very well yet, he hates surprises. (laughs) Hates surprises. Trying to buy him a birthday present or Christmas present is awful. He only recently embraced the idea of spontaneous changes in our lives. And I knew that anything remotely altering our life's routine was just going to meet with uneasiness. So I pressed on before he could respond. And I said, we're having a baby. I can say with complete honesty, I don't remember if he said anything. I just remember being happy and enjoying that meal. I don't remember that if I got a birthday present that year from him, I'm sure I did. 
it just faded in memory because we were having a baby. Life was changing. It had changed in that moment when the doctor confirmed my suspicions. See, life changed just in that moment when Todd heard me say those words. Life was changing. It would forever change. But we had nine months to get ready. And those nine months, we made plans. We picked out baby names. We bought tiny little clothes. We decorated a nursery. We bought a car seat. We went through the unbelievably complex ordeal of installing that car seat in our car. <laughs> that little spark of knowing set off a flurry of activity. In Advent, we hear the good news of the birth of a baby. In Luke's gospel, we move quickly from annunciation to delivery to birth. Advent is four weeks, yet we know that nine months is the time between discovery and delivery. We move a little too quickly. So today, I invite us to slow down. And with Mary, let's ponder the news of this baby. Our lesson begins with, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. See, we learn a lot in these verses. The writer sets the stage for us with time and place and people. We learn how God breaks in in the ordinary times of life with extraordinary news. And the sixth month refers to the time since the angel Gabriel was sent to Zechariah the priest to announce that John the Baptist was coming. And the writer tells us that God sent the messenger to this ordinary town, Galilee, and to an engaged virgin. And the angel Gabriel greets the girl. He says, greetings favored one. The Lord is with you. And the writer tells us that she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Like Mary, I pondered the idea of what it means to be called favored one. See, favored it doesn't necessarily mean special. Favored means to be regarded or treated with preference or partiality. To find favor with God, maybe, means to be preferred by God for a particular reason. I don't think for one moment that God plays favorites. All of God's creatures are loved by God, and I believe are loved equally. However, to be favored might be to be treated or regarded special for a particular purpose. And we hear this in almost all the call stories. We're reminded that God chose David. Samuel, the prophet, was told to reject all of David's brothers and rise to anoint David. And God said, for the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. David's heart was open to God, and Mary's heart must have been open to God as well. It's interesting to note that Mary is told, do not be afraid, but we get no indication that she was afraid. Perplexed, but not afraid. And the angel proceeds to share with her all that God is asking of her. And although the scripture doesn't pose this as a question that God is asking, it seems that God is asking, not telling. And like I said, it's similar to other call stories. Because in Genesis 12, when we hear the call of Abram, it says, Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's home to the land that I will show you. God didn't say, would you go? But he's asking. And Abram went. 
And in the call of Moses in Exodus 3, God says, The cry of the Israelites has come to me, and I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. God didn't say, would you go to Pharaoh? But Moses says yes, and he went. Like Abram and Moses, Mary is venturing in to this unknown, yet she's also knowing. Mary hears that she's favored, and once she hears what is being asked, she responds in humble obedience. Mary hears the call and responds, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Let it be with me according to your word. With this phrase, with this statement of surrender to God's will, Mary offers her consent. Mary says yes. Mary knows what God has said about this child that she will conceive and carry. Mary knows. And Mary knows for a long time. As any woman who has experienced pregnancy It's a long time of knowing, yet not knowing. You carry in your body this spark of new life. You feel it move and grow. When I was expecting, people told me I was glowing. I never understood this. I couldn't look in the mirror and see this mysterious glow, this aura that was obvious to others. All I could see was the residue of sweat. Is that what they were calling my glow? If you've ever looked at artwork or icons depicting Mary, almost all of them include this light glowing around her, this halo, this aura of light. This is present, and it's there to offer us this notion that this person is holy. This glow, this light, this halo marks an otherness to this person. Mary was an ordinary girl, yet God called her to do an extraordinary thing, but also rather ordinary. God called Mary to conceive and carry the Savior of the world. And Mary carried this knowing for nine months as the babe grew within her body. She nurtured God in her womb, in the darkness of the womb. Nine months is a long time of knowing. I want you to imagine with me the time frame. If Jesus was born in December as we celebrate, then the Annunciation would have occurred in March. If we look at our liturgical calendar, March is typically the season of Lent. It's a time of penitence. In the Jewish tradition, It's very close to the time of Passover, a time when the nation of Israel Israel would celebrate its deliverance from slavery in Egypt. It's a time when God delivered the people from slavery and death by way of the blood of the lamb on the doorpost of a house. In the Christian tradition, our time of Lent leads us to remember the passion of Christ And the joy of Easter morning when God claims victory over death and makes way for our salvation. Mary hears the news of the baby that she will carry in a season of celebrating deliverance. Mary knows the child that she carries will rule the nations. That this child will be given the throne of David and that of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary knows that the deliverance from slavery is not just in the celebration of Passover, but that deliverance is held in the darkness of her womb. Mary knows. We move too quickly from Annunciation to birth. In pregnancy, we prepare for the child that's coming. What if we prepare to receive the Christ child anew each year beginning in Lent? What if we spent nine months instead of four weeks preparing to welcome this newborn king anew? 
what would that preparation look like? Maybe it would look like Mary's knowing. Maybe it would be surrendering God's will, to surrender to that will and purpose in our lives. We know who's coming. We know when we celebrate the arrival of the Christ child anew, we know, like Mary, we're called to be servants of the Lord. Kimberly Bracken Long, a contributing writer to Feasting on the Word Bible Commentary, reminds us that Mary responds actively as a willing partner in the holy disruption that befalls her. I love that word, holy disruption. Because that's what happens to us too. When we're called, it's a holy disruption. And we're called to respond actively as a willing partner with God in this world. And when Mary asks the question, how can this be since I am a virgin? What she's asking is, and what we know, is that we're incapable in and of ourselves to accomplish God's will. There's a popular Christmas song, Mary, Did You Know? It's beautiful. The lyrics reflect this earthly ministry of Jesus, from healing the sick to walking on water to calming the storm. And in this beautiful song, Mary is asked repeatedly, Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day fill in the blank? Yes, Mary knew. She knew for nine months while this child grew in her body. She knew that her life was changing and that ours would change too because this light that was shining in her womb would one day shine in a world of darkness. Yes, Mary knew. Mary knew and Mary said, let it be with me according to your word. Mary knew about Jesus. But what Mary didn't know was about her own future. Other Matt Rao the, of the Heart That Grew Three Sizes says this, Mary was moving into the unknown indeed, not because she didn't know who Jesus was or would be, but rather she was given very little guarantee about herself. And she said yes to God anyway. Are we ready to say yes like Mary? Are we willing really to trust in the love of God? Are our hearts open to God? Are we willing to accept our favored status? Are we willing to be instruments for God's purposes in this world? Are we prepared to say, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. When we say yes to God, God's light shines in our life. When we say yes to God, life changes. The light that shines in the darkness of our lives and it frees us from the captivity of sin and death. When we say yes, God's light enters in and it grows in us just as a baby grows in the darkness of the womb. When God's light matures in us, it springs forth new life. And this new life has so many possibilities. And when new life springs forth, well, it's not all peaches and cream. Everything is not rosy. As a new mother, I remember those times where I didn't sleep or bathe. I remember being tired and overwhelmed, and I felt this huge weight of responsibility. What I did mattered in the life of this new, vulnerable, helpless babe. My whole focus was on making sure that this baby was well cared for, that she was safe and fed and loved, and I had no idea who or what she would grow up to be. I only knew that she was dependent on me, and I loved her more than I loved myself. When we have new life in Christ, everything is not always easy. When we say yes to God in our life, it doesn't get magically easy. In fact, in some ways, it gets to be more of a mess. See, Mary said yes. And as an engaged pregnant teen, I'm sure the rumor started. 
And Joseph, her fiance, had every right under the law to sever the marriage contract, to sever the engagement. He had every right to participate in her stoning, for that was the punishment by law for adultery. Yet Joseph said yes to God too, and he stood by Mary, and his life got messy too. When we say yes to God, when we open our lives to God's love and offer our own in return, it doesn't mean that everything will work out the way we plan or desire. Love doesn't erase the possibilities of hardship or suffering. It didn't for Mary and it won't for us. Yet love, God's perfect love reminds us that we are both favored and called. Mary knew. Mary knew what God was calling her to do, and she said yes. Joseph learned what God was doing through Mary, and he said yes too. Mary knew. We know too. What will you do with your knowing? Amen.